do you have an update on uh, JoJo's injury? Yeah, jo JoJo broke a uh, bone in his uh, right foot, and he'll have surgery uh, Thursday or Friday. Okay, and then what are your thoughts on how Seth did in his minutes on against Solid. Oklahoma? Solid, I think he he'll get more comfortable as we go along. Thank you, Chris. We'll go to our next question. Uh, I don't see any hands raised here in the chat. Who has another question? Chris, do you have another one, or is that did you was that from your old one? We'll go to Chris Baldwin with Paper City, Houston. Chris, please go ahead, sir. Hey, Kelvin. Hey. Uh, you're you're the only team in the uh, Big Twelve with the with a winning record on the, ro the road in the league. What what is it about this group that's allowed it to, you know, thrive in those environments? Well, some of it is luck. I mean, we we've, we've had some games that could have gone either way, and we've uh, been able to make the uh, right play down the stretch. Um, you know, our, our kids are competitive. You know, being in every game, I think um, we played 16 conference games and we got uh, beat at Kansas. Yeah, just about every other game on the road could have went either way, and we've had the good fortune of them coming out our way. So I, I, I don't have any answer for that other than um, we play hard, we play together, and uh, our kids are fighters. Thank you, Chris. We'll go to Randy McElvoy with KPRC-TV. Randy, please go ahead. Morning, Kelvin. Uh, Morning. I know Saturday is, is senior day, and you're going to honor all the guys. But I just want to ask you specifically this morning, if you don't mind, to weigh in on just what it's been like to, to, to coach a guy like J1 Roberts and watch his development, what he's done on the floor, how he's led off the floor. Uh, just kind of what it's meant to you personally for to, to have him in your program. Um. J1 is uh, probably the poster child for our program. Um, you know, very lightly recruited. We loved him. Um, we felt like he was a kid we could really develop. He had, he had the things that were important to us, and we explained that to him. Um, every time I saw him play, whether it was on the circuit in the summer, or going over to uh, Colleen to his high school. Um, uh, Kellen saw him first and said, I got a kid I want you to see. And I think we were at Peace Jam in uh, Augusta when I saw him first. And he was going against a kid that I think everybody in the ACC was there watching that big kid. I think he's about 6'10", 240. I think J1 had uh, 14 rebounds and six block shots in that game. Um, I'm not sure what the other kid did, but everybody's recruiting him. I'm not sure he ever made it, but that's an example of the kind of kids that we feel like we can develop. Um, you know, J1 was about 6'6", six, six, weighed about 195 pounds. But, you know, when you're recruiting a kid, kid we as coaches, we have to project. You know, he's going to get bigger. He's going to get stronger. He was young. And most of the kids we recruit are 17. Like Jamal was 17 when he got here. Uh, J.D. Air was 17. JoJo, 17. <clears throat> JoJo's still 18. JoJo won't be 19 until the end of May. We, we recruit a lot of young kids for that purpose. We know none of them's going to play their freshman year. You know, <clears throat> I mean, if we were a, let's say, a uh, top 100 program, maybe. But, you know, we've been ranked in the top 25, top 15, whatever, for a, a long period of time. So when we bring kids into that that environment of uh, expectation that we're going to be pretty good, we don't we, we don't have to worry about them playing. The only freshman that I've recruited that I said, well, this kid's going to play his freshman year is probably Jarris. But uh, J1 was perfect for us. Um, pretty soon he's right at 6'8", and he's 2'30". And he had the instincts. Uh, I think his first game he played as uh, a redshirt freshman against Boise State, he had 14 rebounds. You know, it's going to surprise anybody that's never seen him, but it didn't surprise us. We knew exactly what we were getting in J. Watt Roberts. But as good a player as he's been, 
as solid as he's been, as dependable as he's been. He's a better person. He's one of the greatest human beings I've ever coached. Uh, he's my granddaughter, Maisie's favorite player. Um, and, and I think that says a lot. When your granddaughter, sometimes when I go over to Maisie's house to play, she said, she says, um, Papa, Papa, can we call J1? <laughs> so I say, yeah, we can call him J1. And I'll call J1 and put him on speakerphone. And, um, you know, J1's great within that situation. He starts talking to Maisie. And um, Maisie starts talking to him. And pretty soon she's done. She just wanted to talk to J1. So um, he's just one of those uh, uh, special people that, that uh, makes everybody feel welcome and, and makes them all feel important. He's he's a special dude now. Thank you, Randy. We've got a Chancellor Johnson with KPRC TV. Chancellor, please Thank go ahead. Good. Hey, good morning, Kelvin. How are you? Good. Good, Chancellor. How about you? Yes. Doing well. Um, with another hit to the rotation, how important will it be to manage um, your players' minutes, not just – on the like on the game during the game, but also during practice, and also the importance of making sure that you know guys stay out of foul trouble uh, since the rotation is you know getting smaller and smaller. Well, I think you pretty much answered it. You're right. All that, everything you, every, everything that you said after you asked after you asked the question is right. Thank you, Chancellor. Right I guess that'll work. We'll go, we'll go to Joseph Duarte from the Houston Chronicle. Joseph, go ahead, please. Good morning, Kelvin. Good morning. Kelvin, along those lines, uh, Cedric, a lot, uh, just from what you've seen and, and, and now out of necessity, uh, what what gives you, you know, I don't want to use the word hope, but just to see what the young man has developed there and and, and considering that well, you're going I, into I, the I, No, I don't have, uh, um, you know, we, we give him – instructions here's, here's here's what we want you to do and um you know he made some mistakes especially in transition defense that we got to correct um but um you know sometimes you have a team you just have to figure out how to how to win the game you got to manufacture minutes you got to manufacture uh rotations um who's in who's not um completely changes just about everything you do like you know we started a year with four guys that could play the four spot uh j1 terrence um well j1 terrence and ramon those were our three you know back then you know we we felt like uh uh terrence for instance in december was starting to really blossom you can tell he had 19 rebounds his previous two games and starting to make plays off the dribble in practice, getting by people passing. He was he was coming. He was really coming. I you can always see it in practice before it happens in games. Um and then Ramon uh was starting to be Ramon of his freshman year, really embracing that role, backing up, coming in, doing that. But those guys also had specific roles in our baseline out of bounds plays our sideline out of bounds place or after timeout place. Well, you have to take every time someone goes out, you're taking certain actions. You can't run them anymore. I don't have another this. Or I don't have another that. Um, you know, said has never run a baseline out of bounds play in his life. Um, uh, for us, at least until um, Friday night, at Oklahoma's practice facility. We're trying to get him, teach him how to run this out of bounds play. Just basic stuff that you would never think about if you're a fan or media. As a coach, you got to be organized. You know, you got to be prepared. So we're having to do stuff that, uh, you know, we never thought we'd have to do, but, but that's the situation you're in. You know, sometimes when the, uh, um, Somebody serves you lemons, you got to figure out how to make lemonade, man. Just move on. Do the best we can. I don't I don't uh, look at it any other way. Thank you, Joseph. We'll go back to Chris Gardner, please. Go ahead, Chris. Coach, just what are your thoughts on uh, UC, UCF and the challenges they present to you this coming game? Yeah, they're a lot like Cincinnati in that um, 
it's a really hard matchup for us because of their length and size. You know, they're starting center seven foot. Uh, his backup is 6'10", 6'11". They've got three seven foot, 6'11 guys that they rotate. Um, at the four spot, same thing, 6'10", six, 6'8". Uh, six, six, um, uh, their wings are all 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, I mean, their they're, they're length uh, uh, concerns me, their athleticism. Uh, they're a top 10 defensive team in the nation. You know, we play great defenses. It's, you know, it's getting good shots is at a premium. You know, we've gone from being an outstanding rebounding team to uh, just figuring out how to get a rebound, how to get a second shot, how to get a tip, you know. But um, all those things are in play. We, we just have to figure it out. We'll go back to Chris Baldwin, please. Go ahead, Chris. Calvin, how impressive was uh, what JoJo was able to put together as an 18-year-old, and what do you see as you know as his future going forward? I thought I thought the um, pace he was on was um, probably the best young big that we had in the areas that we value: uh, rebounding, uh, blocking shots, um, getting to the right spot defensively. Um, Jarris is probably the most talented skill wise, but in terms of, uh, impact and winning with rebounding, blocking shots, um, correcting mistakes, you know, extending those, uh, Professor Gadget arms of his and saving the ball from going out of bounds, just little things, um, you know, he's unique, um, but you know, you think about it. Um, you know, we're we've been ranked so high, and he's a major. If you said who's your top six or seven players a month ago, we would have said uh, our starting five, and then we come in with um, um, you know Malik or Damian or JoJo. But for sure, the first big is always going to be JoJo. So if something were to happen, JoJo would just move. I think he could move seamlessly into the starting five. I could have started him this year. But, um, um, you know, just real proud of him. My heart goes out to that young man for uh, going through June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, and February, and his season's over. You know, that's a that's a big hit. You know, everybody will try to figure out what it means for us, but that's a human being with a broken foot who's invested his entire life into this season. Um, and, and I know how hard he's worked. Um, I know the adjustment he had to make coming from high school and then being thrown into the fire. You know, we played the Australian national team this summer when they had uh, Patty Mills and Della Vadova, um, uh, uh, Giddy, Joe Ingles. Um, uh, what else do they have? Those a uh, bunch of NBA guys. I'm not sure our best. We had two guys that played at a high level that day, LJ Cryer and JoJo Tuckler. JoJo was in there battling those NBA guys, and I said, this young fella here is going to be all right. Um, so I feel bad for him, first of all. You know, don't don't feel bad for us. It's just part of it. You know, you don't you don't look back and say, well, if this or if that. No, you say, here's what we got. Let's go. But for JoJo, it's um, you know, tough blow. You know, he's he's going to have surgery uh, Thursday or Friday and. It, it, they were going to have it tomorrow or Wednesday, but I said, no, I don't, I don't want him to have surgery on Tuesday or Wednesday because I want to make sure I'm there with him and, uh, and Kellen. So I, I want to make sure that we're there before he goes in and I want to make sure he sees us when he comes out. That's, that's part of being a family. We'll go back. We have time for a couple more questions. We'll go to Joseph Duarte again. Go ahead, Joseph. Kelvin on Ramon is his type of energy, uh, excuse me, injury, the uh, uh, 
where you'd have any hope that he could return postseason, or is that not a consideration at this point? I've talked to John about that, uh, Joseph, and uh, I, I think the chances of that are very, very slim. We're not counting on it at all. 